Over the next few years, climate change, cutting down trees, and a nuclear war will have done so much damage to Earth that most towns are slowly falling apart. A dangerous lack of air is added to a lack of food and power. One of the few towns still standing in 2067 is in Australia. It has been able to stay alive thanks to synthetic oxygen, but this oxygen is polluted and makes people sick with something called the sickness. The job of Ethan White and his best friend Jude is to keep the neutral reactor stable and get power back on in the city. Their boss scans them all at the end of the day to make sure everyone is still healthy. One of the workers says he can't come in the next day, so Ethan fills in for him to earn extra oxygen credits. The boss still fires the poor guy, though. At the protest, Ethan hears someone say that air should not be a luxury and that people should give up things for future generations. People walking by don't pay attention to him, but the fired worker confronts Ethan. He needs to work badly because his children have the sickness. There is then a fight which is cut short when the protester suddenly starts to burn. When Ethan gets home, he sees on the news that the protester did that to remember the last plant that was still alive. The story also talks about how the sickness is killing more and more people, and how Chronocorp, the company that makes oxygen, says it will find a solution. But people keep revolting because they're afraid that humanity will soon go extinct. The reporter then talks about the dead lead scientist for Chronocops, who was Ethan's dad, Richard. This makes him turn off the TV. Right then, Ethan's wife, Xanthi, shows up, and he gives her a new oxygen mask. While they're joking around, Xanthi suddenly throws up blood because she has the sickness, but she tells Ethan she's okay. Later, Crony Cops calls Ethan and Jude to come to their offices. There, they meet Regina, the chief technology officer of the company, who tells them that Ethan can help them save humanity and then takes them to the lab. The Chronicle is a time machine that they're working on. Richard came up with it 20 years ago. To test it, they sent a clock for a few minutes, and they also sent radio waves and got a message from 400 years in the future that said, send Ethan White. People from the future may have found a way to heal the sickness, but they will only give it to Ethan. But the team doesn't know how to get Ethan back, so he needs to find the people who sent the message. Since Regina asked him to, Ethan and Jude go to a bar after the meeting to think about it. If Ethan doesn't leave Xanthi, Jude tells him that she might die if he stays, but if he leaves, she might live for years. When Jude brings up Richard, Ethan tells him that his father disappeared, leaving his eight-year-old son with nothing but a note to delete himself and a strange device on his wrist. Ethan believes that his mother wouldn't have died if Richard had been there, so he won't do the same thing to Xanthi. But Jude thinks that Ethan should save Xanthi so that he doesn't end up like Richard. Ethan thinks about his eighth birthday after Jude leaves. He waited all day for his dad, but Richard showed up late and his present was a strange box. He put little Ethan's hand inside the box and told him that one day he would have to make a big decision. Suddenly, an electric bracelet wrapped around his wrist and cut it. As the boy cried out in pain, Richard told him that the band wouldn't come off. He then left the house even though his wife begged him not to. Ethan also can't help but think about how his mother died, so he chooses to tell Xanthi about Chronicorp's plan at home. Xanthi tells him not to use her as a reason not to save everyone and to have faith. He doesn't want to leave her. She also talks about the dead kids in her class and says she's scared. In the evening, Ethan goes to the roof to look at the city. As he does so, he remembers the day his mother died on the streets and desperately tries to take off the band. Jude found him that day and gave him his breathing mask. Right now, Ethan yells as he makes his choice. Ethan leaves Xanthi a brass flower and says he'll be back in the morning, but he doesn't know that she's awake and crying. He makes a deal with Regina that he won't go to the Chelsea cop's office until Xanthi gets the first dose of the fix. Regina says yes, and right away, they go to the lab, where scientists show Ethan how to use the special suit and a tiny computer called Archie. Jude also shows up to show his support and says he will keep an eye on Xanthi. The moment Ethan is ready, he steps into the machine. Electricity wraps around his body until the machine fires a blast of energy that sends Ethan into the future. There is a hole in the sky and Ethan falls very quickly. He lands in the middle of a jungle and passes out right away. When Ethan wakes up, he sees that his suit is on fire and takes it off right away, getting away from it just in time. Then Ethan's body needs some time to get used to the fresh air and sunshine, which have helped plants grow back all over the area. Ethan uses Archie to find out where he is after taking some time to enjoy nature, but Archie can't connect to any satellites. He finally drops a magnet into the ground, which lets Archie feel buildings nearby. She then leads Archie to the closest building. When Ethan walks in, he is shocked to see a skeleton with a hole in its head. But what shocks him is seeing that the skeleton is wearing his name on it. A rusty Archie is under the leaves and Richard's bracelet. But this one has a green light is on the skeleton's wrist. He feels scared because this means he's going to die on this journey. 
As soon as he calms down, he tries to open the building's doors, but fails. Instead, he asks the dirty Archie to play the last video. The Machini plays a voice that sounds distorted, saying that it's better this way because no one is hurting. The voice then cuts to two voices fighting, and then there is a gunshot. The battery dies at that very moment, and the rusty Archie turns off. Then he sees a wire wrapped around the rusty Archie. Ethan takes a wire from his suit and wraps it around his own Archie, which finally lets her pick up a beacon signal. After following the signal through the bush, Ethan finds two oxygen tanks, but no one else. In the late evening, Ethan and Archie help Ethan start a fire, but it takes a while. Also, he finds some berries that Archie can't name. Ethan eats one and then drops the rest because they taste bad. After that, Ethan asks Archie to use the constellations to prove that it is 2474. This makes Archie remember how he and Richard used to look at the stars together. But all of a sudden, the memory stops when Richard starts to feel sick and starts throwing up and having hallucinations while a thunderstorm rolls in. As Ethan's dreams get worse, he sees a man running toward him to stab him in the chest. He also sees a ball of light crash near his camp. Soon after Ethan passes out, he wakes up to find that the strange man is Jude, who gave him medicine to treat the poison he got from the berry. The next morning, Jude tells them that Chronicorp was keeping an eye on Ethan's vital signs and saw that he was dying, so they used what power they still had on the Chronicle to send Jude for help. Jude doesn't believe that Ethan is the one who showed them the skeleton. After that, they use Archie to keep following the signal until they find another building that scans Ethan's eye and opens the door right away. Inside is very dark, but there is a screen that glows with Ethan's name on it. When he hits enter, the band on his wrist starts to work and draws blood so that his DNA can be analyzed. Jude tells them he brought a gun because he thinks they are being attacked. The bracelet's light suddenly turns green, and the computer turns on the lights to show that Ethan is who he says he is. The two people are shocked to find themselves in Chronicorp's lab. The computer then tells them that the link will open in four hours for business. Even though Jude is happy, Ethan is scared because his band is green just like the skeletons. Next, Ethan looks through the computer logs and finds a hologram recording that Richard made while he was working for Chronicorp. Richard said that they buried a tracking station that would send information from the future when the air got clean enough to breathe. The team was ready for a response from 2474 in the next post, but all they got was the words, send Ethan White. She asked if they could send the matter right away, but the report said there was a problem with the power in 2474. The lab system turns off all of a sudden, and Ethan's computer tells him that there is a problem with the nuclear core power. When Ethan has Archie do an analysis, they find that the power feed is broken, which means they can't go back to 2067. It also tells them that there will be a nuclear blast if they don't fix the problem before the timer runs out. Jude runs off to get tools, but Ethan can't figure out what it all means. Chronicorp knew about the power outage because they got the message before calling him, and that message was sent from here, which means they fixed this place and found a cure. He asks Jude why Chronicorp sent Jude instead of a doctor, and doesn't tell them about the power outage. Jude just says he was the only one who wanted to help. Jude then demands that they start fixing things, but Ethan wants to look at the situation first, which almost makes Jude angry. Jude tells Ethan to slow down and see how serious the situation is. Because of this, Ethan agrees to fix the access tunnel as long as they search for the person who sent the message afterward. The two people go through the bush and arrive at the city, but it is in ruins and full of plants. They find a lot of skeletons as they look around, and Ethan realizes that no one lived in the year he came from. The Earth only waited for people to die before it healed itself. They go to Xanthi's school because they are scared and find the bodies of the students, which means they died in the classroom. Ethan is sure they will fail the task if no one is around to move the bodies. Then he finds Xanthi's body, which has the metal flower in her hand. Ethan thinks about the night Richard asked them to meet somewhere, but someone followed them and killed his mother and stole Ethan's breathing mask. He is very sad. Jude found Ethan and saved him, but Richard never showed up. Ethan has a panic attack because of the memory, but Jude helps him calm down. Ethan sobs because he feels bad about leaving Xanthi by herself. He still believes that they can't make things better, but Jude tells them they're better off because no one is hurting anymore. This surprises Ethan because that's what the rusted Archie told him. To be sure, Ethan Ethan plays the tape again and sees that Jude shoots him at the end of the argument. That's when Jude pulls out his gun. Ethan asks him why he has it when there's no fight going on. They start arguing until Archie tells them there are only two hours left until the nuclear bomb goes off. When Jude drags Ethan to the caves, they see that the nuclear core is damaged and need to change the way the power goes. Right away, when they try to do that, 
They fail, and the computer tries to lock the door for safety. Jude blocks it with a metal bar, but Ethan takes the bar away when he hears the computer say that the room needs to be depressurized. Jude then goes outside to save Ethan. Then Ethan uses the oxygen purge, which brings back the power but makes him pass out. Jude is so scared that she breaks the glass, letting air back in to save Ethan's life. When they got back to the lab, they found out that they only had 37 minutes left until the link launch. When Ethan opens a door, he finds that it goes to his skeleton. This makes him realize that he can't change what's going to happen. While Ethan changes the batteries in the two Archies, he tells Jude that he is going to shoot him. After that, he has Rusty Archie play the last thing that the other Ethan saw. In the recording, Jude is seen threatening Ethan with a gun and telling him to fight back. Jude says he has no plans to shoot Ethan, and they get into a fight. Jude suggests they stay where they are, but Ethan won't let anyone die. Then Ethan breaks open another door to get to the utility room, but there are no masks there. Ethan pushes Jude away and goes to the computer to play a log that was made on his eighth birthday. Jude says they can't save everyone. I made a mistake, Richard says, but Jude cuts off the power during the message. Ethan is so mad that he locks Jude in the utility room and turns on the power again to let her watch the message. Richard called home and asked little Ethan to walk with his mother to meet him. He wanted to tell his son that he did everything for him. Regina and Jude came into the lab to catch him before he could leave. Regina planned to use the Chronicle to escape to the future with a small group of important people. She wanted to stop looking for a cure and say that people were the real virus. Richard refused to help and admitted that he had set up the system so that only Ethan could use it in the future. This made Regina very angry, so she pulled out a gun and asked one of the scientists if they could send at least one person to fix the power problem. Once the doctor said it was possible, Regina killed Richard. Then Jude gets away and tries to stop the recording, but it doesn't work. This is when the rest of the truth comes out. Regina sends a group to kill Ethan's mother and tells Jude to take care of Ethan. Jude is called out for using Ethan all these years, and Ethan gets angry and jumps on Jude. They then argue again about what to do next. Jude attacks Ethan and pushes him against the wall while pleading with him to fight. Ethan starts to pull wires to try to stop the Chronicle. Since Ethan says no, Jude pulls out his gun and points it at Ethan's head. Ethan doesn't fight back because he trusts his brother, Jude. Jude feels guilty when he sees Ethan in so much pain because it reminds him of the night they met. He tells Ethan he's sorry and then deletes himself. In the present, Regina is getting the elite group ready to leave. When they get to the future, she tells a guard to kill Ethan. Go back to Ethan, he's having a meltdown and reaches out to grab Jude's hand. He only stops when the computer responds to the ping sent by Regina's team. These events finally help him understand that he is the one doing everything in the lab, so he writes the send Ethan White message with a plan. In the present, Regina waits for the timer to run out, but the Chronicle shuts down instead of opening a link. They find a gift from Ethan inside the machine, a bunch of plants, a can, and a video of Richard's death. Ethan gets rid of the Chronicle in the future so that no one can use it again. Soon, news shows in the present will talk about Regina's arrest and how scientists are working with plants to start restoring the environment. The can is brought to Xanthi by a Chronicorp worker because it has her name on it. When she opens it and sees a real flower, she starts to cry. Ethan buries Jude's body by the river in the future and leaves the metal flower on the grave. Suddenly, he sees a butterfly nearby. Ethan remembers that his father taught him that everything in the world is linked through time, and he runs back to the facility only to find that his skeleton is gone. Ethan is excited about the possible changes, so he runs through the forest to get back to the city. This time, he finds that people have survived and buildings that fit in safely with nature. 